Yeah. And then when students are here, you should put donuts or candy on the table. <laughs> yes, no, that's probably smart. <laughs> There's a guy named Gannon who has free chips, and chips. like right here, yeah. and he has like a full-on tent yeah. above his thing. And I'm like, that's smart. That's smart. And he always has people coming up. Yeah. Him, so. Again, project, let's chat, personal hobby, just like to talk about whatever anyone wants to talk about for five minutes. It sounds like you're cool with it. Totally good with it. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> I'm Ty. Nice to meet you. Air Green. Air good Green. We were actually pretty good friends for the cameras. Yeah. Uh, um, and I've been to your house a couple of times. You've got a brilliant family. Um, Thank you. What do you want to talk about? Well, I want to talk about what we both want to talk about. Free okay. will. Free will? Yeah. Free will is a happy topic. Yes. Okay. Free will. What about free will are we talking about? Uh, I'm convinced it's an illusion. That there's no such thing as free will. Right. Okay. You mind if we talk about that for five minutes? Sounds great. If we go over, that's totally fine, but okay. I'm not here to waste your time. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, free will doesn't exist. Uh, what do you mean by free will, and how confident are you that it doesn't exist? Probably good to define, um, are you able, as a human, to make any decision on your own, of your own free will, or is it deterministic? You have free will in that definition. Would you mind redefining? It? Sure, sure. sure. Uh, are you able to? So, what is maybe, free maybe, will? Maybe an easy way to look at it. If you look at, you have two buttons: a red and a, and a green. I got a red and a green button. Uh, f free will would be the ability to choose which button to push. Okay. Just to decide. The ability to choose is free will. Yeah. Do we have the ability to choose? Right. Do we have the ability? I think we have an illusion that we have the ability. Okay. But we don't have the ability. The only reason I would pick button. What did I say? Green and blue? Mm -hmm. The only reason I would pick green is because of some neuron that's firing that is making me think, oh, let me push the green. Or I might even go, ooh, I don't want to push the green because I just had, you know, green salsa on my okay. tacos today, so yes. I'm going to push the blue. Can, All, I, yeah. can I throw something out? Yeah, yeah. I want to get a better idea what you mean by free will. Are you saying free will is, in a sense, as you're calling it, um, being able to spontaneously come to a a choice or make a decision yeah. that's not influenced with anything in your past or background or upbringing or anything like that? Yeah. Okay, okay. Is, is that, is is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the event that I agree with you, uh, in the event that like we can both agree that you know everything that we choose is based on something that's happened to our past mm -hmm. or some biochemical process that we may not even be aware of. Right. Is there a possibility that that thing may not actually be free will? Like, we can both agree to call something free will, but sure. it may not actually be free will. Could um, there potentially be something else that is actually free will that might actually exist? I, I suppose if you believe in a soul, uh, that would be the best explanation, I think. For... I could throw out a, another popular concept of free sure. will. Um, if I were to sit at this table and talk to you and have a good time with you like I am mm -hmm. right now, that's me exercising my will to speak with you. Yeah. Um, now... Two things could happen. One, you know, we can have her finish our talk and I can get up and walk away, mm -hmm. exercise my free will. Right. Or someone who's like sitting by who likes Apple stock. I don't know, some crazy guy who someone. invests in Apple. An <laughs> uninnovative company of the year, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> just decides to pick me up and drag me away from the table. In both cases, I leave the table. Right. But in one case, my free will has clearly been violated. Right. And, and here, I think we're just using a term. We're... My, this is a different term. Right? Yeah, like my ability to exercise my will is being acted on by an external force, yeah. and it's no longer yeah. freely. Yeah, that's a that's a out. very different conversation. It's a very different thing. Yeah. Um, I, I I think I think where I would frame this is if we could roll roll time back mm -hmm. um, to before either this guy <laughs> pulled you off the table or you decided to leave out of your own volition. Yeah. Um, my my statement would be it doesn't matter. If you roll it back in time, the same thing's always going to happen. Sure, like a VHS tape? Yeah. Like everything's already been pre-recorded? Yeah. Well, I, I hesitate to say pre-recorded. Or how do I put it? Um, it's very hard due to the machinations of the machine that is reality. Right. For anything that is unprescribed or unnaturalistic to occur right. spontaneously or random, truly R randomly. Truly random, sure. Okay. I'm not sure if that's free will. But I can also agree with you that probably something like that may not exist. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that has any relationship to free will. There's a po is there a possibility that... I mean, that might be free will, but I'm not convinced yet. Yeah. What do you think? Do you, are you convinced 100% that that is free will? Like, what would you say is your confidence level on, on that actually being free will? Maybe that's the better discussion. Yeah, I, I think we're bouncing around a little bit. Uh, re rephrase what you're thinking. I'm wondering what actually... 
how confident are you that the thing that is a spontaneous choice is in fact free will? Like we are, we can agree. We even if we agreed and called that free will, like how mm-hmm. how would you say that's a necessary and sufficient definition for free will? If we're calling what free will? The, the, the spontaneous spon- choice. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm I'm saying that a spontaneous choice seems like it's a free will. Okay. But it's really just biology. Okay. Right. So yeah. I, I think people call that free will, and it makes sense to call it free will because you you have agency. And sure. You, you you know you. The, the worst, I think the doomsday version of, of telling everybody in the world we don't have free will is that everyone's just going to, well, who cares? Mm. Let me get a gun out and just go shoot people. It doesn't matter. Okay. I don't have free will and blah, blah, blah. But really, that's that's not what it is. It's just uh, understanding our, our biology, mm. I think, is important. And, mm. if, and if, if we could find out that, that you actually don't actually make these choices in your mind, these choices are actually being made for you by your biology. Sure, it's still you, and you know you have agency, and it's still you, and it's still be a good person. Don't okay. you know go shoot people? Mm. But I think, in terms of science, it's so much more important to understand what it means than to pretend that we have this thing called free will okay. and, and to and to blame it. Mm. Because uh, and forgive me if I'm going. Too no, far no, no. Off. I think this is totally fine. I think I I think we've come to the, the agreement that. There's no such thing as a spontaneous choice. Things yeah. seem to be based on everything. I'm fine yeah. with you. Yeah. I think as far as whether or not that exists, I think we're both in agreement that yeah. it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. I think there's pretty good. Yeah. There's a reasonable amount. It doesn't sound like you're absolute. It still also sounds like. I, I mean, it's, it's it. one of those things where there, I don't see any science. Same here. For it. I yeah. mean, it, you're, you. I don't you, think it's been demonstrated. Yeah. Either. It, it, you alluded to it. If, if someone, you know, if someone pointed out, you know, somewhere in science, like, oh, sure. this thing, we, right. we, we can't see it with our microscopes right now, but. But I found it detecting this, and mm. you know, I think some people even have studied free won't. Free uh, which, won't. Yeah, that's interesting. You can you know, if you if you cook up a, a, a MRI or fMRI to the brain, and you, and you you ask someone to push button A or button B. Yeah. Um, you know, you, there are there. Are, yeah, there's patterns in place before before you the, even before you the, even admit that you've made your decision. Yeah. The, the yeah. brain already knows what it's going to do. Brain's really really cool. Yeah. And it's a fascinating thing. And I'm agree. I think we're on agreement. Yeah, yeah. I think we also have a reasonable have a, have evidence to come to that conclusion as well. I'm just saying also, and I think you're on par, part with me. If there was a if there was a popular alternative definition for free will that seemed to point to something that might actually exist we'd be able to say, okay, well, this definition of free will exists, yeah. but this definition doesn't seem to have any basis for it. So yeah. conversation as far as that is is good. Yeah. Mind if I push it to a different weird area? Oh, oh, yeah. Are people under the definition where we live in a deterministic universe still culpable for bad things that they do? Yes, and I, th- I think that's where a lot of the importance is in this topic is, yeah, if somebody murders someone, mm. um, just because well, their biology did it and they didn't do it doesn't mean we shouldn't lock them up, mm. right? right? Um, you know, you, you still have responsibility. Okay. Um, and, and I think the importance there is the, the way we treat other people mm. is influencing other people. So, you know, if we never locked people up for doing bad things, sure. people are more likely to do bad things because there's no disincentive for it. Okay. So you don't have that free will. Uh, but um, you're still influenced by things outside. And, and Is there anything that I could have done that was based on my environment that I'm not responsible for? If it would hurt another person or impaired the good, the the well-being of another person? No, could I ever be yeah. forced into a situation where I do something that harms someone's well-being, but the fault is the environment that I'm in and not necessarily me as an agent? Yeah, I, I think mental illness. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and I think... Um, and I'm, I'm no neuroscientist here, but it's my understanding that some uh, very, very bad people mm. um, have, uh, it's been discovered that scanning their brains has found tumors and different things that have caused behaviors. Sure. Uh, I forget the guy's name uh, that, that, that actually donated his, his body in his suicide letter. Oh uh, yeah, say, he he shot a, a lot of people. Yes. I know who you're yes, talking yes. about. Yeah, uh, I know. Who you're... We'll have to edit this back and insert in what that is and make it look like we said. I'll it. put a little picture there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May um, actually, I don't want to promote the guy, but yeah, right, right, sure. He, uh, it was a criminal who did some terrible things, but he donated his body to science in an attempt it's, to it, see what was wrong with yeah, his mind. Because he he knew he knew mm. he was not making these decisions, and mm. and it turned out they found a whopping tumor and it was pushing on a part of the brain that that, that 
scientists have, have determined that this makes sense. This is understandable. I did it. So in that case, uh, yeah. I mean, should you lock someone up? You know, if they were still alive after they did it, yes. But sure. if we know enough about biology and we can go in there and pull that tumor out, I mean, are we curing them? Hmm. Are we taking a part of their body away and they're no longer them? Are we removing the external force that's we, causing them not right. to be able to act exactly. freely? Yes. It and sounds like this is yes. a blend of the two yeah, that yeah. I was no, discussing. Yep. That's and, interesting. And calling it an external force is kind of weird when it's in your body. Well, it's, I mean, like... But you're right. Yeah, right. yeah, it, it exactly. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an unneeded... You know, well, maybe. I mean, we might learn so much about the brain eventually that we can, you know, remove parts of the brain to create people that are more docile or, you know. So this is purely for fun. It's a bit of a tangent, but I'm thinking, like, is it possible that the concepts of free will that we've brought up, one where it's a spontaneous choice, and the other where it's a violation of, like, or a, 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 a susceptible target to a violation through external forces, is there a middle ground there where free will may actually exist, like a combination of the two? Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, since we could both agree that you could viol- if I violate my free will by like having someone drag me out of here, that's something that might actually exist. Right. Whereas with the spontaneous choice, doesn't exist whatsoever. Like right. I can agree that it's always based on something. It seems like an ideal. Right. If it's something that's actually in the middle, mm-hmm. could it have an aspect to it that actually doesn't exist? And does that seem like that could be a possibility? You know, I, I I hate to rule anything out, mm. uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't see any evidence for that. Um, I, I, like the guy who was shooting, and he had the tumor that was growing okay. in. He's like, I feel like there's something that's yeah. violating my free will. I can't really explain it. That make my body to science. They right. find it. There's this giant tumor in his brain that's like affecting his decision making right. processes, his chemical balances. Mm-hmm. That's an external force that's acting on his free will. We might be onto something here. Mm-hmm. Maybe some more study off to the yeah. fact, but mm-hmm. like. There could be grounds for saying, as much as we had said before, like, yes, everything that you make a choice is deterministic on your brain chemistry. Right. But if there's an external force in your brain chemistry, that's also a violation of something. Sure. But it gets weird, though, because we are talking about the brain. Yeah. They were born with that brain. Yeah. And oh, that tor- yeah. Tor- tor- so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 then, it, then it just gets down into, to, uh, it gets down to uh, what is morally good to do to someone's brain to, mm. uh, and I think in his case it sounds like it would have improved his quality of life mm. and certainly the quality of life of, of the people uh, he ended so yeah uh, but I, I don't I see that on the far left or, sure, or sure, the, sure. where you were talking about yeah. the spectrum it's like a spectrum yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I see, I, but I don't see something in the middle that's not known I, I guess you're saying not known in the sense we don't know of it yet. we don't know about it yeah and that could be yeah, yeah but could we could be. be like getting closer to something yeah. but I, I think admitting and a lot of people have trouble admitting that free will is illusion. Because, mm. you know, I've talked to artists before that, you know, people, they're very passionate, artistic people. And they're like, no, there's no way I have free will. Right. I can paint. I can draw. Sure. Yeah, unfortunately, I think your brain chemistry is doing all that. And then, uh, you know, you were going to paint that regardless of, of what you think you thought before you were about to start. Mm. Um, but um, uh, I think the more we, ad- the more comfortable we are admitting okay. that it's that it is an illusion, the more science can go that direction to discover. Can we knock out one more cool thing? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we good. got 10, yeah. 11 sure. minutes or so. You had mentioned, I think there's a concept of self that I want to talk about with you. Oh, yeah. Because it sounded like, as you said, with like the painter, the painter says, hey, I painted a lot of things, and your response was something akin to, akin to um, well, that's not you painting it, that's your brain chemistry. Right. Who's the your? Who's the, uh, hang on, let me, uh, David is... Uh, I'm just going to respond to him to tell him. He thought we were at the Arboretum. Uh, I'm going to tell him to light up. The right person you're talking to is not the emergent property of brain chemistry. Who is that you So, that's, uh, now we're talking about self and, and talking about, of course, I don't, we could go down consciousness and all that. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that's a whole other. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but uh, the self, yeah, that, it's interesting. I think, um, you know, I think it's something we kind of create or invent uh, to kind of group together oh, all of these who's, pieces. Who's and parts. the we? Like, yeah. it's something that we construct, but like, what is doing the construction? That's R- what I'm right. asking. Right. I think consciousness really is the, 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 the bit of, you know, consciousness is that there, uh, I forget who says it, but there's something um, like it to be. You know, there's something like it to be me. That's consciousness. For something me. like I, it to be me. There's something like it to be me. I okay. Mean, it's, it's like if you had my consciousness, yes. you woke up, you, Whoa, would, you would think you were me, right? There is, that is, and, and I think that's just a cl- collaboration of all of this, all of the biology inside of you. And then we 
you know, as humans and as, as humans with, with, with language, I think we've created kind of like this person sitting in a chair with, you know, looking behind the eyes, kind of controlling things. Sure. And that's really just... It's like a, a way for us to make a pattern to explain the phenomenon of it, our existence. Yes, it, yes. Just a person in a chair. Yeah. And it, that like just, someone behind our eyeballs right. exploring the world. Right. It's like, that must be us because right. nothing else kind of really makes sense. Right. It's yeah. how we, like, we look at a car, there's a person inside driving right. it. Look at a plane, yeah. someone driving it. It's very it. analogous. It must be like, to, yeah. 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 It's easy to interpret. Yeah. Right. So right. I think in itself, it's just certainly an interesting but is that accurate like couldn't we just say no you actually are your body like Mm, yeah but but and your brain's a part of your body where is the where's the you where's the you yeah where do you put it so like you know would you have an issue if someone said like well if you cut off my arm I can still think myself I can still concept so I must not be in my arm people have lost their legs still had that people lost the lower half of their bodies people had like parts of them paralyzed still had it Mm -hmm. but when you mess with the brain yep that's when you start to affect the person specifically. You can mess with the heart. You could definitely mess with the heart, but you can replace the heart. Completely sure, take it out, put it in sure, a fake heart. Yeah, Dick Cheney, yeah. or, you know, Vice President Cyborg of the of the <laughs> century. True. <laughs> Still kicking uh, okay, around. Okay. And we've lost, I think, enough body parts from enough people through yeah. our historical records to know, like, the brain is the thing that if you mess that, mess yeah. with that, you affect the person as they see themselves and how they express themselves to other people. So if we took that brain... I would say at least we're definitely the major function of our central nervous system located sure. in our cranium. But that, that still, does that make it the you? I would, wouldn't would you say there's a pretty good evidence for that? I mean, it's the closest thing you can get, but I mean, uh, I suppose if you... Like if I chunked out a huge part of your brain and kept everything else intact, yeah. there's no more you in there anymore. Right. Right? Well, if you're brain dead and there's no more activity, but you still have the brain physically, mm-hmm. it needs to be like a... It's an, I would say it's an emergent property of an intact brain to an extent. If you put that brain in someone else's body, say we could. Oh, that'd be cool. Are, Can't wait for that day. Are you Are you still you? Yeah, that's there's that's, that's the body Ludo narrative right, business yeah. that I'm real, there's some great science yeah. books for that. And I suppose in some ways if you cut off the arm and got it replaced with the uh, bio uh, what do you call it? Um, Augmentation. Yeah, so, so you, you, you replace someone's arm um, then, I mean, yeah, there's still you, but Boy, they're gonna have a different life. Sure, so, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they're still yeah. they're still them. They use it. They use in the brain somewhere. Yeah, I think I'm so. Not sure where. And of course, that's where you get in. You start taking pieces of the brain out. Yes. Are you taking away parts of the you? So this is a fascinating thing. Have I ever told you about split brain patients? I think split maybe brain we talked patients? about this. Guy who yeah to yeah. stop seizures with there's yes. like a little yes. band that connects yes. both hemispheres yes. together uh-huh. cuts them yeah. yeah and then all of a sudden you have these two independent sections of the brain. Right that start at the same place but quickly diverge to completely different personalities different right. needs different yes. wants and they express themselves differently because they but there's a consolidation that occurs too so weird yeah yeah but there's a there's a process where they start split brain and then they end up reconciling again. hi yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually help each other reason out yeah. things it's just like so well, they'll cover up one eye which only one brain can see out of and they'll be like right. show them a hammer and they'll tell that side of the brain draw what you see in front of you and one side doesn't see it and right. they're like I can't draw anything but the hand's drawing a hammer because the other brain can see it and they're like why'd you draw a hammer and so now both brains have to work with they each other they different choices too if they're dressing themselves one will reach for a button up shirt and the other one goes for the graphic t-shirt it's fascinating mm. and it's and in that sense like if you believe in a soul like how many souls does that person have like a split brain sure. patient have is that two different souls right they've had questions they've asked a split brain patient do you believe in God thumbs up no I don't like it's been yeah. like do you love your wife yes I love my well, wife very much of course how so dare the, you the, ask the, me that question and the, and the, yeah. <laughs> like one side has a sense yeah. of humor right. the other side's very serious about yeah. the love so like so, so very then, interesting and then in the context of our conversation yeah. if, does that mean that there are two you's does it in that person but yeah. does that mean we have two you's in all of us and we just they're merged together and we yeah oh it's a really fascinating wow. thing yeah i can't wait to learn more about the brain i like i like this yeah well hey wasn't that great it was lovely to meet you <laughs> <laughs> lovely to meet you too. Well, you guys, that's cool you guys covered ghost in the shell you covered the theseus <laughs> paradox you covered uh Rene Descartes and uh, the self yeah i think i more or less agree with you on the fact that spontaneous choices don't exist mm-hmm. and your, your basis for it was that uh, I don't have enough evidence to support it. I'm like, and you weren't absolute. So I'm like, great. Is there anything else? Because <laughs> we had a good, yeah, okay. that's done. Like we already figured out. Here's some alternative ideas of free will. What do you think about those? Yeah. I think I never thought about free will definition as a spectrum before. And I think I learned a lot from that conversation. Because now it feels like 
it may not just be one or the other. There could be something or like a merged thing in between. Another whole argument to it is, is uh, you know, instead of being deterministic.